So let us look at another linear programming example which will lead us to another kind of problem which we will look at as a general way of solving a large class of algorithmic problems. So this is a problem called bandwidth allocation. So supposing we have a network, a telecom network, basically an internet provider has a network and there are these three users, right? So we have A, B and C, they are these three users, right? And they need to be connected. So you can think of A, B and C as three locations of a company, for instance. So they want, this company would like a certain quality of internet connection between its three locations and small a, small b and small c are the nearest hubs maintained by the internet service provider. So basically each company office is linked to the nearest hub of that internet service provider and these hubs are linked to each other and so now the service provider has to connect these offices capital A, capital B and capital C through its network. So these numbers which are mentioned along these links right, represent bandwidth capacity. So they are capacity constraints. So let us assume that these are in megabits per second. If you want, you can think of a larger unit, but it is just illustrative. Right? So that means that no more than 10 Mbps can flow from B to capital B to small b. Right? So one of the constraints that the company that is buying this internet service has has asked is that it must have a minimum of 2 Mbps bandwidth between any pair of its offices, right? So there must be 2 Mbps bandwidth going this way, going this way and going this way. All these must have 2 Mbps bandwidth, okay? So the bandwidth is not affected by how many hops it takes. So if I want to connect capital A to capital B, so I can of course do this shortest thing which is go from capital A to small a. So that is the nearest node of my ISP, my internet service provider. Small a connects to small b and small b is connected to capital B. So this is the fast route. But there could also be another connection which goes this way. From small a it goes to small c and then from small c it goes to small b. So this kind of indirect connection is also allowed and the sum of these two will be the capacity that I get from capital A to capital B. Now there is another aspect to this which is that for the company the company that is maintaining this and providing the service, they get paid by this customer and they get differential payment for different combinations of offices. So some of these offices maybe for the company that is buying the service are more important. So this company is willing to pay 300 rupees per Mbps for traffic on this route, it is willing to pay only 200 for this route and it is willing to pay 400 for this route, right? So here I pay 300, here I pay 200, here I pay 400. So now what as an ISP we need to do is allocate the bandwidth right, to maximize the revenue. So remember that this is only at least, it is not that I am giving my customer exactly two bandwidth, that I am willing to give more than two also, but I should not give less than two. So now if I look at any two offices of the customer, then there are two ways to connect it as we saw. right? So let X denote the shorter route. So X capital A capital B denotes how much bandwidth is being allocated to route traffic from A to B via the short route via small a and small b and Y A B will be the long route, right? So this is X A B and this is Y A B. So the same thing will hold for the others, right? So there will be a X A C and a YAC, right? And similarly, there will be an XBC and a long route which is YBC, right? So there are six possible routes, three short and three long, which together give us the three desired routes, which are from capital A to capital B, capital A to capital C and capital B to capital C. Now how do we reconcile the constraints, okay? So if we look at this route, Right? then it uses this edge. So anything that flows along the short route from A to B goes along this particular connection from small b to capital B. So does anything which flows from here to here. Right? So these both contribute to the capacity congestion on this edge. But so also does traffic coming from here. So any traffic which comes to B follows this thing. Right? So this traffic and this traffic also comes. So if you look at 
which are all these constraints which come here, then you have x a b and y a b that is all the traffic coming to b from a by the short route or the long route and b c plus y b c which is all the traffic coming from c and this total traffic cannot exceed the capacity of this link which is 10, right. So, this link has only capacity 10, so I have to respect that link. Similarly, of course, you have the same thing for these links. So, if I look at this one, then all the traffic that comes to A either from B or from C must add up to something less than 12 and if I look at this link, then all the traffic that comes to C cannot exceed 8, right. So, these are three constraints on these three links. Likewise, we will need to express the constraints on these three internal links between the nodes of the ISP itself. So, here we can see that for if I look at this edge, right, then the short edge from capital A to capital B follows this thing, okay. The long edge from A to C follows this thing and the long and the and the long edge from B to C follows this thing, right. So, each internal link is on one short edge and two long edges. So, this particular small a small b link is on x a b the short link from a to b and then the long links from a to c and b to c and this total cannot exceed 6, right. Similarly, for the other things, right. So, this one would be on this short link, right and these two long links. So, we have for each of these we have one short link and two long links and the sum of these two short links I mean two long links and one short link cannot exceed the capacity of that edge. So, we have six edges, six constraints, okay. And then we have this other constraint which is the customer's service requirement which says that the total amount of traffic from A to B which is the sum of the traffic on the short link and the long link must be at least two. Right. Similarly, for B to C and A to C. And finally, right, we have of course, that we cannot have negative traffic, but finally, we have the revenue part. So, this is what we want to optimize as far as the ISP is concerned. We know how much we get on each of the pairwise connections between the endpoints. So, what the ISP wants to do is ma maximize how much revenue the customer is willing to pay, right. So, remember that this was 300, this was the more expensive one 400. And this was the one which was cheapest only 200. So, if I am the ISP then I will give the minimum here on the bottom, right. I will make this minimum to satisfy the 2 Mbps guarantee and no more and try to maximize in some sense how much I flow between A and C because that traffic will actually earn me more revenue. So, you can feed this of course to simplex and simplex will give you values for all these variables. So, if you look at this variable it says that along the short route I am getting 0, right. Along the slow route I am getting 7, okay. Then along the short route I am getting 1.5, along the long route I am again getting 1.5, but so now this is all, okay. So, what this is really saying is that total, the total from A to B is 7, right. The total from B to C is 3, and the total from A to C is 5. So, even though A to C gives the maximum revenue, it turns about it is better to get because of the constraints that are there in the network, it is better to actually give more from A to B and as we saw the least revenue comes from B to C. So, it is not surprising that this is the least amount of allocation that this solution gives us, right. Now, one thing that we observed in an earlier problem was that we had fractional solutions. Now, here it is not a uh, it is not like hiring one person or making one carpet or something which is indivisible, right. We can give half a bandwidth, half a megabit of bandwidth. So, it is not a problem. Fractional solutions are okay, right. And if you look at this, it will turn out that everything is saturated except uh, this edge, okay. So, if you examine that solution. But the problem with this approach, I mean setting up this problem as a linear program is that it does not scale well and the reason it does not scale well is basically we have created one variable for every possible route between the two nodes. So, we have in this case a kind of triangular network in which there were two possible nodes routes, but imagine that if I had one more way of a triangle here, then I would have so many more routes, right. I would have this route, I would have this route, I would have this route and so on. 
So the number of roots between pairs of nodes would explode and in general the number of paths in a graph, okay, paths are remember where you do not even repeat a vertex but the number of paths in general is going to be exponential. So if you are setting up a linear program in which you construct one variable per path then the linear program is going to be very large compared to the graph that you started with. Right? So this is not a good strategy actually to model such programs, uh, such problems and what we will do is we will actually look at a better approach. So we will look at something which actually solves these so called network flows more effectively. Right? So these are called network flows. Right? So we have a network and flow in this case is literal, I mean we want to flow some internet, it could be pipe and we will see other examples of things which do not obviously look like network flow but which can be modeled using flows. So what we have seen is we have seen one general technique to solve optimization problems called linear programming and we have seen some examples, right. So we saw one example involving making suites and making an optimum combination of suites. We saw another thing about scheduling production of carpets and here we saw a problem where we wanted to allocate flow in a graph. So what we will see now after this is that we can actually solve these problems using flows in a graph more directly using the graph itself rather than converting it to linear programming and then that in turn network flows will also turn out to be a generic problem solving technique which will apply to a number of problems. Okay, so this is a very, so these two classes of problems so we are not really studying in some sense how to solve them so much as how to use them. So that will be the focus of what we are doing, how to use these two powerful techniques to solve other algorithmic problems which can be modeled in terms of these two tools.